What gives you the right to tell me what I should believe? Well, that is something we can hear when we seek to share and tell others what God says in his word. And that may lead us to wonder, what does give us the right to tell people what they should believe and trust in? Well, the call of God to Ezekiel to be his prophet answers that question for us this morning. Please rise. We read Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through chapter 3, verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, for they are an impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words, or dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside. And written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. This is the word of God. Ezekiel was a priest that lived among the exiles in uh, the exiles of Israel in Babylon, which is also called Chaldea. The Lord called Ezekiel to be his prophet and to go to the people and speak his word. And when the Lord called Ezekiel, he appeared to him in a great vision. That vision is recorded in chapter 1 of Ezekiel. But you may be familiar with the sight of the four cherubs that appeared to him and then the four wheels within a wheels that appeared to him. And Ezekiel tells us at the end of chapter 1 that when he saw the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God, that he fell on his face. That is why our reading this morning in chapter 2 begins with God telling Ezekiel, Son of man, stand on your feet. Then here in chapter 2, in the beginning of chapter 3, God calls Ezekiel to go and speak his word to the people. Now the word that God gave Ezekiel to bring to the people was bittersweet. And the same is true of the word that God gives us to share as he sends us to be his witnesses to all people. There are a number of similarities between what God called Ezekiel to do and what God has called you and I to do. Well, Ezekiel was sent by God. Now, we have not received a direct commission from God by God appearing to us in an amazing vision and him calling us directly. But we have Jesus' instruction to go and make disciples of all nations. He tells us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to preach the gospel to every creature. You are no less sent by God as was Ezekiel. Instead of a vision, God calls us and sends us out through his word that has been written down for us in the Bible. And we see here that Ezekiel was sent to speak God's word. In verse 4, God tells him that he's to go and say, Thus says the Lord God. And then again in verse 7, God told him, You shall speak my words to them. 
And that is very important. Ezekiel was not to go and bring his own word to the people, but the word of God. In the same way, you are sent to speak God's word to the world. Now, we don't have a message of direct revelation from God as Ezekiel did, but we have the revealed and inspired word of God written down for us in the Bible that we can share with people. That is the word we are to speak to the people in the world that God has sent us to. When you read the Old Testament, you see over and over the words, thus says the Lord, and it's followed by a direct message from God. Ezekiel could say, thus says the Lord, because God gave him the words to say and to speak to the people. But when you share what the Bible says, you too can say, thus says the Lord, because you too are speaking God's word. Thus says the Lord, you have sinned against me. Thus says the Lord, I have forgiven you all your sins because I sent my one and only son to die on your place in the cross and pay for all of your sins. When God called and sent Ezekiel here, he gives him a warning in verses 3 and 4. He says, I am sending you to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are an impudent and stubborn children. Twice more in verse 5 and 7, he tells Ezekiel that the people are a rebellious people. Is that any different from us? We too are sent by God to a rebellious people. For we all rebel against God. We all by nature rebel against God and reject God and reject his word. And we have turned each of us to our own way and sought to follow our own desires. And we all have a sinful flesh that resists God and resists his word. And the people to whom we are sent to speak are no different than us. But God also tells Ezekiel something very important in verse 6. He says, Do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. And that is the same thing that God tells you. Do not be afraid of them or their words. You should not be afraid because it is God who sends you with his word. And God repeats the command in verse 6, do not be afraid of their words, and then adds, or be dismayed by their looks. Dismayed by their looks? Literally, do not be dismayed by their faces. Are their words or their looks or the faces they make at, at us something that we should really be worried about? You probably know the nursery rhyme, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never harm me. So why should we care about their words or their looks? But isn't that so often what we are worried about? Isn't that why it's often so much easier not to tell someone what God's word says, not to share what God says, than to risk getting a dirty look or someone making a face or even saying something against us? Not only that, aren't we often even worried about what they might think, much less say or show on their faces? Well, you and I are not alone in this fear. Evidently, it's a fear that Ezekiel himself had as God several times here, tells them, do not be afraid of their words or their looks. And God encourages you and I not to be afraid either. Well, on the news we see that Christians can face something far worse than looks or words. We hear of persecution throughout the world. Even beheadings have been in the news in the past couple of years. And we see here that Ezekiel himself faced things that were far worse than just words and dirty looks. As God says in verse 6, Though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid. But God was with Ezekiel, and God is with you as well. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. What I will not fear, what can man do to me? When God called Ezekiel here, 
the Lord twice tells Ezekiel something that I find very interesting. In verse 5, he says, As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. And then again in verse 7, God says, You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse. No matter what the response would be, Ezekiel was still to go to the people and speak God's word. And the same is true for you and I. People may hear you or they may refuse to listen to you, but God still wants you to go to them and tell them what God has done for them by sending his son to die in their place. This also shows us that neither Ezekiel nor you or me are responsible for making people listen. We are to speak God's word whether people will hear or whether they will refuse to hear. Of course, we're not to speak God's word in a condescending or boastful manner. We are to speak God's word in love. But the reception that we receive is not based on our eloquence or lack thereof, but on the people's stubborn hearts and on God opening up their ears to hear his word. But still, we may be reluctant to go and speak to others and to tell them what God's word says. And what God tells Ezekiel to do here will help you and I as well. In verse 8, God tells Ezekiel, Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then Ezekiel looked up and saw God holding out a scroll to him with writing on the inside and on the outside. And then in chapter 3, verse 1, God said, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. Eating the scroll was a preparation for Ezekiel so that he could go and speak God's word to the people. God told him in verse 3 of chapter 3, Son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. This scroll was a visual manifestation of God's word that Ezekiel was to go and tell the people. He was to fill himself with God's word so that he could then go and speak God's word to them. Feasting on God's word is what equips us to share God's word. And that is what you do each week when you come to church and hear the Bible readings and listen to the sermon. It's what you do when you come to Bible class or read your Bible throughout the week. You are filling your stomach with God's word. That's a rather interesting picture, isn't it? It shows how important it is to hear and to read God's word. It's as important as eating. Do you remember what Jesus said when Satan tempted him to turn the stones into bread after he had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights? He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God's, the mouth of God. A constant diet and feasting on God's word will give you life and will enable you to speak God's word to others. Well, would you just eat one big meal on Sunday and then not eat anything else for the rest of the week? That probably wouldn't be a very healthful diet plan. In the same way, it's good to constantly feed yourself and to hear and read God's word throughout the week, to constantly feed yourself and build yourself up so you can share that word. Now, when Ezekiel ate the scroll, we see in the, our last verse, he said that it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. But as we see in verse 10, he said that written on the scroll was a message of lamentations and mourning and woe. So it was sweet on his mouth, but it had a bitter message as well. And the word that we share is also bittersweet, just like the message that Ezekiel was given to bring to the people. It is bitter because God's word tells us that we have all sinned and we fall short of the eternal glory of heaven. God's word tells us that there is no one who is righteous, no one who, is do who does good. And it tells us that our sin only brings us death. First physical death and then eternal death and a separation from God in hell. 
But God's word is also sweet because it tells us that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to die for us and to take away the sins of the whole world, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Because of Jesus' sacrificial death on your place and the fact that he rose from the dead, God declares you not guilty and welcomes you into his eternal kingdom. But even the bitter message of the law, which condemns our sin, is sweet to a believer, as it was the scroll to Ezekiel when he ate it, the scroll with lamentations, mournings, and woe. Our new men, our new creation delights in the law of the Lord. And when someone points out our sin, we should rejoice that God is calling us away from doing something that displeases him. And the law gives us the ammunition we need to put to death the deeds of our sinful flesh by the Holy Spirit. And the law also reminds the new creation within us how God wants us to live and what we can do to thank God for the great salvation that he has given us through his Son, Jesus Christ. But to those who are perishing, even the sweet message of the gospel is one that is bitter. The message that we're saved through Jesus' death and his resurrection, apart from anything that we do. It's bitter because it requires a person to acknowledge that they can do nothing to save themselves and that they have sinned against God and are dead in their trespasses and sin. And given how bitter the world finds this message, it can seem that our mission is hopeless. But remember, God tells us to go and speak his word, whether they will hear or whether they will refuse to hear, because the power is not in us, but in God's word. In Jesus' ministry, he traveled about and preached, repent and believe in the gospel. We read in our gospel that the disciples were sent out and they told people to repent. Now, is that something that we ourselves can do? No. We are all dead in our trespasses and sins, and a dead person cannot do anything. Jesus himself said, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. We cannot by ourselves repent and believe. So how could Jesus go and say that? and tell us to repent and believe if that is not something that we can do? Well, the answer is that the power is in God's word. The power is in that very command. And we see this demonstrated so beautifully here in this call of Ezekiel. At the beginning of chapter 2, as I said, Ezekiel was flat on his face before the Lord because he realized he was sinful and could not stand before the holy God. And God commanded him, Son of man, stand on your feet. Does Ezekiel obey? Well, not really. He tells us in verse 2, Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. Because Ezekiel could not stand before God, with the command to stand, God gave the power and the ability through the Holy Spirit to do just that. We also see that with the scroll. God told Ezekiel, eat what I give you, and eat what you find, eat this scroll. And what does Ezekiel say? In verse 2 of chapter 3, he says, So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. Again, God is the one who is acting. He causes Ezekiel to eat that scroll, to digest his word. With the command to eat, God caused Ezekiel to eat it. We often talk about the word of God being powerful and living, but here we see it demonstrated so beautifully. And Ezekiel received another very striking demonstration of the power of God's word later in his ministry in chapter 37, where we read the account of the Valley of Dry Bones. You may remember in that God brings Ezekiel to this valley filled with dried, dead bones and said, can these live? And he said, Lord, you know. And he told Ezekiel to speak to these dry bones. And they came together, and sinews and flesh formed on them. And they became together and became people again. And then God told him to speak again so that 
their spirit and the breath would fill them and they became living people. And that's a very striking demonstration of the power of God's word. And that's really what we are doing. We are speaking God's word to people who are dead, dead in their trespasses and sins, and bringing them God's powerful word that can make them alive again. And God has made us alive by his powerful word. The same power that allowed Ezekiel to stand before God allows us to stand before God. The same power that allowed Ezekiel to believe and trust in God's salvation that he's given through his son allows you and I to believe and trust in that salvation. The same power that was in the words that Ezekiel spoke are in the words for, that you speak from God to those you share. So fill yourselves with God's word. Share God's word without worrying whether someone will hear you or refuse to hear you. And do not be afraid of their words or their looks or whatever else they may do because God has sent you with his word. And remember that the power is in his word and not in you and that his word will accomplish that for which he has sent it out. May God enable you to faithfully and confidently speak his word for it is he who has placed that word in you. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.